my name is John Steele of the University of New South Wales. This is the next in our series of videos on complex analysis. What we're going to be looking at in this video and in the subsequent one are residues uh, at isolated singularities. I discussed the idea of isolated singularities in the video on poles and zeros. So if we have a function that is analytic on uh, some punctured disk, so 0 less than z minus z0 less than r for some positive r, then the coefficient of z minus z0 to the minus 1 is known as the residue of f at z0. Now, depending on the shape of the Laurent series we've got here, we have essentially we have three different types of singularity, uh, isolated singularity, I should say. If all the negative powers happen to have coefficient 0, then we refer to the singularity as removable. The function is really analytic at zero, it's just some sort of accident of definition. Uh, and the standard example of that is sine z over z. If you write down the power series for sine z over z in powers of z equals zero, it begins with one. There are no negative powers, it's one minus uh, z squared on three factorial and so on. So that's a, a removable singularity. And in that case, the residue is zero. So there's no work to be done there. The second case is where finitely many of the negative powers are non-zero. Uh, C minus P is not zero, but every power below that is zero. And that's a pole of order P, which we looked at in the z uh, video on zeros, uh, zeros and poles. Uh, and I'll discuss how to find the residues of those in the next video. The third case is where, in fact, infinitely many of these negative powers uh, have non-zero coefficient. And that's a thing known as an essential singularity. Now, the residue of an essential singularity you can only really find by writing down the series. Uh, you can do that for poles, but as I said, I'll show you some other methods in the other video. And for removable, the residue is always zero. So let's look at uh, three examples on finding residue at essential singularities. Well, uh, the first one here is uh, 1 upon z. And I wrote down the power series around z equals 0 for that in the video on the wrong series. It's 1 plus 1 upon z plus. In fact, I don't really need to go any further. I only need that term. But the next term would be 1 upon 2 factorial, in fact, z squared plus and so on. So the residue at z equals 0 is simply 1. It's so a coefficient of 1 upon z. Second example, z cos 1 upon z, not that much harder. We write down the series for cos 1 upon z. We just take the series for cos and change the z to 1 upon z. So we get z into 1 minus 1 upon z squared 2 factorial plus, once again I could stop there if I wanted. In fact, I think I will. I don't need any more because clearly the coefficient of 1 upon z is going to be minus a half, and that's the residue. Is minus a half at z equals 0. The third example here is a bit more complicated because I've got a product of things to calculate. We need to write down the series. Again, we're looking at the residue at z equals 0, because those are the only singularities. We get z squared into, well, the series for sine begins, well, 1 upon sine here, 1 upon z minus 1 upon 3 factorial z cubed plus and so on. In fact, I know I won't need any more than that. The series for cosh, 1 plus 1 upon z squared 2 factorial plus 1 upon z to the 4th, 4 factorial. As long as z is not 0, right, that will be um, convergent. So what I need is the coefficient of 1 upon z. Well, uh, in order to get that, what I need is the coefficient of 1 upon z cubed when I multiply those two terms together. In fact, I might as well multiply them out as far as I need. z squared into, well... I'm going to get a 1 upon z from that term times that term. I'm going to get a 1 upon z cubed type from this one times that one. That's going to give me a 1 on 
2 factorial times 1 on half, and I'm going to get 1 from 1 on 3 factorial times the 1, minus 1 on 3 factorial, which of course is minus a 6, plus, and then I'll get higher terms. But I want the coefficient of 1 upon z, and I'm only going to get uh, that out of this one, because the z cubed here, so I don't need to do any more work, I just need to write down that the residue at z equals 0 is a half minus a sixth, which is, of course, a third.